Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Sorry for the uh, couple of weeks off there. I got a little sick, feeling a lot better now, and I wanted to show you all a really fun, really cheap way to get into leather marbling. This is the first way that I ever did it, and then eventually graduated onto doing the more traditional, like, Ebru sort of thickened leather, um, or sort of thickened water <laughs> marbling, which I will do a video for one day, um, but, I just really want to show you this one first. So it's very simple. It's very inexpensive. All you need is some shaving foam and some leather dye. Um, personally, huge fan of all of the Angelus dyes. Um, they're my favorite. They're super pigmented. They're really easy to use. They're not too stinky like a lot of um, leather dyes are alcohol based, so they can be quite potent, but these ones are great. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. I'll show you a couple different ways to do it. Um, you want to make sure you're using shaving foam and not gel. Um, you need the kind of poofiness of this to hold up your your dyes. So I just start, I use um, just like an old baking sheet. You can do this right onto, you know, I used to do it on tin foil or um, just right onto a piece of paper. I've just laid down some uh, construction paper. I just get big rolls of it at the hardware store for fairly cheap. And the nice thing is, is you can just kind of crumple it up and recycle it when you're all done, your workstation's taken care of. Um, so I like to kind of flatten this down a little bit. It gives you like a nice little sort of canvas to start working on. You know, something to <laughs> finally using that little U-line card that they send out that nobody ever uses for anything. Um, yeah, um, there's a couple different ways that I like to throw the dye down. I'll use these little bottles. Uh, these are just from the dollar store. They're super easy to find. And I'll just lay down a few different colors. You know, you can use these little, nice little pipettes. They're used in like baking. I find these at the art supply store. But just start with like a nice sort of random pattern you can use as many or as little colors as you want on this. It's totally up to you. We'll start with like kind of a brighter one. And of course, like any sort of negative space in there is gonna let the natural veg tan show through, which will be quite nice as well. So I usually like to leave a little bit of that showing. And you don't want to like have any sort of big pools of dye. You'll see it'll kind of eat down into the shave foam a little bit, create like a little bit of a puddle, just like not the most desirable, but it will still work. It's not going to ruin anything. So once you're kind of satisfied with the color layout. Um, what I usually do is I just take one of these little sticks and you can kind of manipulate your colors, sort of give them like a little bit of a swirl around. You know, really play around with it. You can, uh, you know, you can use like the more traditional combs if you're going for like a specific pattern. Personally, I'm just a big fan of, you know, the kind of freeform, squiggly style, if you will. <laughs> and it does sit a little bit on the stiff side, so it's not like when you do it with thickened water, it's not gonna like spread out and move around too much. It is a little bit of a different look. It's still a very cool look. And uh, like I said, it's very inexpensive very easy to do. It's a good way to kind of, you know, like start playing around with manipulating dyes and doing different finishes and things as well. You could, you know, draw little smiley faces or something or just get, just get creative with it. Um, and then you're just going to take a little, I'm just using scraps today, a little scrap of veg tan and push it into your little mess there. And I like to push it right down. Just make sure it's getting your whole surface. 
and then what I'll do is I will lift it up and check and see so there's some little spots there that don't have any color I'll kind of go back through throw a little bit down it does look cool with some of the veg tan showing through as well so don't feel like you have to do this step <laughs> and then we just let it sit I usually let it sit for about five minutes it sort of absorbs in or it allows the dye to really absorb in so when you rinse it it's not all just washing off and fading away and you know feel free to wear gloves I just don't they just don't fit my hands very well <laughs> you can uh, get this off with alcohol afterwards and there we go so it looks like a little bit of a crazy mess right now I usually like to have like a couple little bins and stuff just for you know the excess I'll dispose of it later you can also go right over top of this but I am switching colors up a little bit here so I figured we'll scrape the bulk of this out of here you know that's an example of like more of sort of like a brighter pattern that you can do um, you can also get, I have some more like fall colors kind of laid out here too. So we'll give that a shot while the other one is processing. It really doesn't matter what brand of shave foam you use. I get these from the dollar store. Um, I know I say it a lot, but I do buy a lot of supplies and consumables at the dollar store. You know, this isn't. This is not an inexpensive craft to get into, so it's nice to find little ways that you can save some money here and there. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and with this one, I have some orange. You know, you can also sort of splatter it on, you can use a paintbrush. There really is no limit. And again, you can also, you know, use the edge of this to spread it around if you want something that's like a little bit more of like a blurred effect versus the sort of thick lines. You can get kind of a little bit of almost like a tie-dyed effect going. Just lay your little piece down. Don't be scared to kind of squish it in there. So this one's about ready. It's been sitting for five minutes or so. So what I like to do is just kind of brush off the excess of the shave foam. And then we're just gonna turn it right around. I just have a small little bath of water here and we're just gonna rinse off all this shave foam.
You shouldn't need to scrub too, too hard. I'm just gently kind of getting rid of it. And there you have it. I usually just do like a little blot with a paper towel and just lay it flat to dry. Um, I have done this straight on to pre-cut pieces like little panels and stuff for wallets or card slips, um, but it does, because you are completely soaking this, it will shrink as it dries. So I find it's best just to prepare this, you know, give it a little buff and a clear coat and then cut out your pieces from there. <laughs> so we'll do this again with this kind of brown one. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty messy process. You can, you know, take steps to keep it kind of tight and clean, but be prepared to, you know, have a little fun with it. Wear some clothes you don't care about. Chuck some paper down. And so this is a result of kind of smearing the colors. You get sort of like almost a burl effect to it when it's all done, as opposed to the more relevant, or prevalent, I don't know, that's another word, <laughs> as opposed to sort of like more dominant lines and squiggles. It's something that's a little bit more organic. There's some areas where the veg tan will show through. I'm going to let these dry and I will show you guys how I buff and seal them. I really like this for doing sort of smaller projects too. Like this is a great way to use your scraps. You know, you can do things like make little earrings out of them, key fobs, use them as little accent pockets. You know, you don't necessarily have to do a massive panel of them. Kind of have fun with it. Play with different color combinations. Obviously I tend to sway <laughs> to the brighter side of things. And just try different ways of manipulating your die around. So I've found much with anything in this craft, you know, really just sort of messing around, trying new things. It's a good way to, you know, find some new techniques you might like, some stuff you might not like doing so much. But um, yeah, this shaving foam method's an old favorite. I still do it fairly often. And like I said, you can kind of find different ways to manipulate the dyes on here and come up with some really cool finishes. So don't be scared, you know, maybe even 
get wild, like throw that sort of little bubble method on top of here, that could work, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> if anybody tries it, make sure to send me a message and let me know how it worked out for you. But I even found just with the last one that I did, doing the little credit card scrape instead of swirling it turned out very cool. It was more of sort of like a a little bit of a kind of a tie dye. So I'm just gonna try adding a touch of water. Make sure this is nice and cleaned off. There we have it. So this one I'm going to try to throw some of those kind of fall colors back in. You know, you can get it looking a little bit woody almost. Um, I'm going to try something where I drag a little string through it and we'll see sort of what kind of an effect that gives. This is the fun part about working with natural veg tan and leather dyes. You can really get a bit wild with it, try some new techniques, you know, come up with something fun. It just adds such a nice touch to your finished leather work to have, you know, a little bit of a panel or something that not necessarily everybody else is going to have in their work. That might be a little too lightweight. We'll see though. Not necessarily my favorite. Um, I did really like how the rigidity of the card kind of drags this across the surface. Personally, that's just my preference. You can also go back through and add some sort of accent-y little drips and whatnot too. Oops. This could be a weird one. <laughs> Let's find out.
That actually turned out beautiful. I'm really excited to see how that dries. It's a little bit of a uncovered pocket there, but you can always cut around that. I think this will make something really cool. <laughs> I will admit, I didn't have high hopes for this one, but this actually looks pretty rad. So that's just with dragging the ink or, or the dye around and then throwing some extra little spots after. But we'll let these get all dried up and I'll show you what they look like when they're all done. Okay, so now that all these pieces are nice and dry, what I like to do is get like a clean little piece of just white t-shirt material and just give them a little bit of a buff. Just make sure none of that dye is coming out or anything. Nothing too crazy. Just takes a couple seconds. And then what we're gonna do is cover these with just a quick layer of a clear coat. Um, you can also, because it's not bleeding dye or anything, you could just hit it with some um, like Aussie conditioner or whatnot. Um, I like to use a layer of clear coat just because personally myself, I wear really dark denim. And so wallets and things get stained pretty easily. This is just a little bit of a layer of protection um, just to kind of like close off the pores of the leather and, you know, kind of restrict other dyes from seeping in. It'll still happen, but a little bit less so. So this is just uh, the Angelus High Gloss Clear Coat. I really love this stuff. I cut it one-to-one -one with just some distilled water. And so you get a really nice flow. It goes on nice and evenly. You don't need to overly saturate it and you don't wanna brush it around too, too much. Um, once you get it on there, it kind of just sort of spreads out and absorbs in and makes for a nice even layer. If you brush it too, too much as it's drying, what'll happen is it'll start to dry, it gets a little bit thicker, and then you end up with big streaks from your brush. So just get it on there nice and quick. And that's pretty much it. Once this is dry, you're ready to start cutting it into little pieces. Do little key fobs. I have a friend who makes earrings out of this stuff. You know, the sky's really the limit. You can experiment with different thicknesses of leather. Um, this one right here is quite a bit thicker than some of these. This will make for a nice little bifold, I think. It might even be just long enough for a trifold. I think this one might be my favorite. <laughs> and again, just, you know, mess around. It's a great way, you know, use a lot of, like if you have little scraps and stuff around, give it a shot. It's a good way to make sure those things don't get wasted. You know, you can even use like just a little cutout in a key fob or something. There's all kinds, whoops, that's not where that goes. <laughs> all kinds of different applications for these things. And there you have it. Each one of these was a little bit different ways of spreading the dye around. So like I keep saying, just experiment. You know, take these little tips and tricks and make them your own. Try some different things and show me what you come up with. I always love seeing it. Um, thank you for joining in. I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next one.